the American dream has become a nightmare. Signs of the time are on cardboard on corners in town. Like a cancer that silently spread, there's an unspoken fear. We're on our way down. We must take America back Main Street to Wall Street Cities and states Washington, D.C. Before it's too late, there's not long We need leaders who lead us Not stick us and bleed us Then ransom our future And our children's, that's wrong We must take America As liberty weeps, our forefathers spin in their graves. Pray God will bless some way out of this mess. We must take America back. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the National Intel Report. I'm your host, John Stantmiller. With you on this Tuesday, 19 January 2021. And as promised, uh, on the road up in Montana is Stuart Rhodes of Oath Keepers. Can you hear me, Stuart? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, well, first of all, welcome to the program. It's been a co- Thank you. It's been a couple of years. I think the last time I interviewed you was back in 2018. And a lot has happened since then. That's for sure. <laughs> you, yeah. You... <laughs> You put out a letter uh, that we posted on our website last week, and basically it read as a call to arms, and then almost immediately and miraculously your website disappeared, and so was the ability to get a hold of you. Um, what happened to the website? Um, we were deplatformed by Liquid Web, our host provider, just as... Uh, PostGator is starting to deplatform Patriot websites. Same thing happened to us with uh, Liquid Web. So I would definitely not recommend Liquid Web for anything. They they took our site down, our servers down, and and then refused to turn over turn over our data. So we had to, you know, it took us a few days now. Our, our site's back up now, just now. It took like four days to get it back up. So more of the cancel culture that's going on across. Uh, the left and also across all the IT world. And that is going to continue. Um, I saw the Twitter CEO the other day talking about continuing to block Trump. Trump is not on any social medias of any notoriety in this country. And they're still moving ahead with the guy's impeachment and all of that. And their big, uh, their big reason and excuse Stuart, no matter how you think of Donald Trump, how good of a job he did or not, I witnessed and I watched very carefully the vote fixing in this country. The evidence was gathered, good people from all walks of life that volunteered to be uh, poll watchers to make sure that the election went with as few glitches and questions as humanly possible. Uh, and my estimation, and I'm 99.999% sure that that was a rigged vote, the evidence was being gathered. People, Stuart, were filling out affidavits, making their statements, filling out the affidavit, uh, affidavits themselves. And under penalty of perjury, which, which means jail time, these good people stepped up to the plate and said, there's something wrong here, and I saw it. Now, none of these courts, whether it be liberal or conservative, supposedly Republican judges, Supreme Court didn't want to hear it. Nobody saw the evidence. It was like, there's nothing to see here, just move along. And this culminated on January 6th. And I was not aware, by the way, that you were in Washington, D.C. I wished I would have known that, would have met up with you there. But I was there as well. And I saw what transpired, and I saw what happened. Yeah, it was an absolute theft. I mean, 
<clears throat> it was blatantly obvious. It was really the most um, incredible uh, example of gaslighting I've ever seen, like mass nationwide gaslighting. All this stuff you see right in front of your face is not happening. Whether it's the, the counters being kept out of the room where they papered over the windows or being told to stand 30 feet away, they couldn't see what was going on, or the, the camera footage, security camera footage later that showed um, them, you know, supposedly closing down the poles and then dragging out suitcases under the table and, and processing more votes when the, uh, the observers were gone uh, to the one woman who was, was processing the same ballot over and over and over again. It's like rampant fraud right in front of your face, but then they gaslight you and tell you that you're crazy if you think any fraud happened. Well, and uh, I, I was told, Stuart, and there are very few media outlets out there that you can depend on to give you the who, what, where, why, and how. That's supposed to be the basics for journalism. Not uh, It's supposed to be white paper, give both sides of the story, we'll present all the facts that we can gather, and you decide. That is not, and I've heard Katie Couric in the last couple of days defining on Bill Maher's show... Uh, what journalism is now. Uh, I have seen a lot of people, Stuart, that think that they're practicing journalism and all they're doing is practicing bipartisanship and rooting for their respective camps. And I give you the U.S. media. Yeah, it's propaganda. All they are now is propaganda. They're like the, uh, the Nazi Germany official. Was it wasn't even the, 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 the official uh, paper in Nazi Germany. Or like Pravda in the Soviet Union. You know, they are the, the mouthpiece of the of the dictatorship, basically. So that's where we're at now. If we live you might as well live in China. That's pretty much where we're at. We're China light. Well So Americans are gonna have to man up and, and walk the the founders path now. That's what they have to do. Well, and uh, by the way, what's coming to America is the same point system that the government's going to award you that they're doing in China uh, for benefit from the government or to stay off of we're going to come and get you list. Now, Stuart, um, I wanted to ask you, because you put out a pretty terse call to arms last week. Has... Well, it wasn't a call to arms. I didn't, I didn't say go grab your guns and go. What I did say is go muster in your county and get strong and get get ready to defend yourselves in your county and then at the state level organize your counties with mutual aid mutual defense if you want to call that a call to arms i guess you, I guess you can do that well uh, that's the way i took it was uh, this, okay. this is no that's party fine. this ain't no disco this ain't no fooling around boys uh, well, like i said you gotta walk the founders path that's what they did yeah they they were facing an almost exact parallel they're facing an overseas power that was illegitimate, which, which they had no representation, that was lording over them through domestic puppets. Those were the world governors. And they were dealing with an international corporation of, of incredible power, you know, known as the East India Company. We're in the same exact parallel situation. We've got foreign powers, communist Chinese and the globalists, uh, globalist bankers and elites, who are trying to dominate us through domestic puppets that they have bought and, and blackmailed into uh, subservience and also stolen the election for it. And, you know, the DNI director, director of national intelligence, just told us the other day that China did interfere in the election. And Trump should have used that as his green light to finally do his duty and invoke the Insurrection Act. But he did nothing. He left us holding the ball, did not do his duty, did not do what he had full power to do, what we've been urging him for months to do, and just left and left it. He power of the presidency in the hands of an illegitimate imposter. And I'm pretty upset about that. Uh, as well as a lot of people are. Uh, the military, 25,000 troops uh, from all 50 states, by the way. National Guard from all 50 states being sent to Washington, D.C. Uh, Puerto Rico, they were basically telling their troops that... Uh, uh, we're going to be facing the Proud Boys and insurrectionists and the enemy of the state, quote, unquote. I've so how come Trump couldn't do that? When they were trying to burn down the St. John's Cathedral right <laughs> outside the White House, why didn't Trump nationalize the Federal Guard or the National Guard, you know, federalize the National Guard and bring them into D.C. to suppress the insurrection there? Why not? 
Well, they got upset over tear gas. Uh, oh, the treatment of the so, black lives. So he's still the commander in chief. Yeah. Who, who runs the country? Who is the commander in chief? Who's the president? Was it CNN or was it the president of the United States? So he should have just manned up and, and did it. I don't want to hear any excuses for him. I'm done. Seriously. He failed. I mean, I, I accuse him of, of dereliction of duty and cowardice in the face of the enemy. He was a commander in chief. He did not suppress an open rebellion against this mission. He let it go on until they took over the, the government. That's where we're at. But you got an imposter. You know, I call Biden the imposter in chief. Um. Well, what's <laughs> what's to do after this? Okay, we got a, a president you didn't like, and now we've got one that you really don't like. Now, it's not that I don't like him. He's not the president of the United States. He's illegitimate. Well, no, he I, stole the election. Okay, uh, my my bad. Let me reword that: a president that um, I don't like, but a president that uh, is obtaining office through illegal means. Uh, that that's apparent to me and everybody. Um, I was starting to say before, Stuart, One America News. I had gotten gotten a call, and I didn't know about this. One America News has been quietly tucked away on satellite. And they're they're garnering a lot more listeners, and how they're doing that is because people are leaving the mainstream, especially Fox, in droves because they haven't exactly turned out to be straight shooters themselves. But the point being that I sat for eight hours straight. They ran a commercial free. The hearings up in Lansing, Michigan, the capital of uh, Michigan, where they went through the affidavits. People showed up to testify in front of the legislature. In my mind, that was enough to say, stop, hold the presses. We need to take another look at this. You know, you watch, I said this yesterday, Stuart, you you watch a football game. uh, If there's something questionable, they'll stop the game. They'll stop the clock. They'll give you six different angles, take as much time as necessary to, to look at everything, to make sure they got it right. But we have an actual theft. And this is not political hyperbole. I, I don't go in for that. I call it as I see it. This was an election theft and nobody wanted to review anything. So here's our question. Given a level playing field, there's going to be a lot to complain about in the Biden-Kamala Harris administration. Uh, The I don't know who these people are, Stuart. I don't even know what the hell to call them anymore. You can't call them Democrats, communist, socialists. I think you should call them Chi-Com puppets. I think that's the appropriate term. Chi-Com puppets. If they're wanting to mirror the Chinese government, yeah. But the point is that they're deplatforming. No, I mean, literally. I mean, literally, chi puppet. Biden is beholden to the communist Chinese. They and, helped him steal the election. And, and before that, with all his business dealings with him and his son, they bought and paid for him. They bought him through the blackmail over his son. His son was filmed with, you know, raping and torturing little girls. And that's how they control both Hunter Biden and his dad. Well, uh, literal it. it was kind of interesting. The Chinese released videos of Hunter Biden and his crack pipe and his his whores. <laughs> you know, I'm right. just, I, I'm just, I, I am just. A, a, most people did not see that because the people that would have presented that to their fellow Americans, they've been deplatformed, such as yourself, such as many other notable conservatives. That all they want, and and I've said this, Stuart. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, election 2020. If it was a legit election and Biden got voted in, hey, so be it. I think that's what most people were complaining about was unfair elections. And you don't take an election. If you've got the full vote and confidence of your constituency, you don't have to steal the vote. Yeah, we've we've moved. We've crossed the Rubicon. They, they don't, it's like in Venezuela or Cuba, any other dictatorship, they don't want to have to screw around with actually pleasing the people and, and garnering their support. That's just too too bothersome. They just want to just go ahead and just take power and hold on to it any way they can. And they justify it because they think they're right, period. Well, and it doesn't make it legal or morally or ethically no. right. It just 
No, we're, of course not. We're right, and what the hell are you going to do about it is basically what we're being told. Right. Yeah, well, that's why they, you know, like they, they gaslight of this, but they also, they don't really care if you know. Because what are you going to do about it? And that's a good question, because Trump did nothing about it. He ran to the courts and whined and complained. The courts told him to go fly a kite, didn't want to do anything. You know, the Supreme Court ducked their own original jurisdiction, refused to even hear the case. And then once he realized that was that was foreclosed to him, and, and then he just sat on his hands. He didn't do what he should have done. He, should have, he voked the Insurrection Act, and he should have seized all the data and declassified everything and exposed them all. I don't know the reason why he did that or didn't do it more precisely. Could they have threatened right. him and his family? I mean, we, I don't know. We've watched. Pres- that, what was his oath, though? Was his oath to support defend the Constitution? I'm not making excuses for him. I'm not making excuses okay. for him. Okay, I'm, I'm just, just saying I don't know. I really don't. I don't care. Don't know and don't care. All right. Yeah. So, as I started to say, all things being equal, we're not going to have the ability to push back against the Biden White House. You know what's coming. The Paris Accord, that will be back in force. The Green New Deal will be back. Um, We've already got the illegals lining up, getting in columns, marching toward the southern border. We're going to continue to put this country in debt to bail it out over a scandemic. Uh, We've already got a $10 trillion mortgage bubble that is getting ready to burst. And I, I found it rather fascinating taking eight, nine months to get checks to people from a government that helped cause this problem, and then they want to fight about how much they're going to send out to people. You know, Stuart, I don't know in, in its scope. I've watched this since 2008. I watched the biggest ripoff by banks ever witnessed by mankind to the tune of a, a quadrillion dollars or more that weakened the country that crushed it the banks rolled up the carpets they weren't loaning any monies and then we roll into the pandemic of 2020 half of the businesses are gone they're not going to be able to return and this country is in severe cultural economic dire straits where in the hell do we go from here well, like I said, I think you walked the founder's path. They resisted, they nullified, they refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the king's or parliament's edicts, and they lived their lives in defiance of them. And then they organized for their mutual defense down at the town and county level. They organized town and county militias. And then when the crown tried to enforce its edicts at the point of a bayonet and a, and a, and a musket, they fought back. That's the same path we're going to have to walk. You separate yourself from it, declare yourself independent of it. I would say we're still loyal to the Constitution, but call this out as an unconstitutional, illegitimate government we're not going to obey. And then you resist it. Then when they come for you, you defend yourselves. Well, what else can you do? Well, and that's the exact reasoning the other side is using right now, that they need to purge this entire country of people that supported or voted for Donald Trump. Well, bring it. Let's go. We're going to have to fight. You guys, you're going to have to fight, guys. Get ready to fight. But do it together. Don't be isolated at home by yourself with no one around you. Come together like the founding fathers did. They did not stay in their homes isolated. They formed public militias. And they also formed the Sons of Liberty. So follow their example. Become strong. Nor, nor did they march on, on Boston either. Keep, keep that in mind, too. Engage landed and, and declared all town hall meetings no one, or, uh, banned. They just stayed in their rural communities where they were strong and he was weak, and they thumbed their nose at him. They held town hall meetings anyway, and they forced him to come to them. They forced him to aggress on them where they were strong and he was weak out in the countryside. You know, That's what you do, too. Yeah, it's kind of strange, the parallels with this, because they ordered uh, bars or pubs, which were pretty much the forerunner to a restaurant bar type of thing they ordered those you couldn't you couldn't go into those establishments this is exactly what they did with the COVID-19 scam uh, shutting down everything and telling you you had to shelter in place this to me was the biggest indicator uh, Stuart that uh, what was to come 
uh, before Donald Trump was even out of office. I saw this coming. We have followed this very closely. We've pointed out their error and just just blind. Um, I, oh, I it's intentional. It's not. It's not an error. This is the plan. The plan is to kill your economy, to put you in a perpetual state of emergency and subservience. It, it's the nine eleven, the medical nine eleven. This is. Well, and most people think, well, you know, they keep talking about Republicans, Democrats. I, I, Stuart, I call these the visible sock puppets. These are the people that are doing the dance, the marionette dance in front of yeah. the public. This is not the deep state. Your new world order is not Nancy Pelosi. That's right. It, it, it's one behind the scenes. <clears throat> like I said, she's just a puppet. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me take some calls here. I knew this was going to happen. Mary in Virginia, you're on with Stuart Rhodes. Go ahead. Hello, John. Hello. Stuart. Hey, how you Kudos doing? Kudos, both of you. Hello. Yo, go ahead, Mary. All right. Uh, do you remember when Bush was transferring, whatever, the powers to Obama? And we we're $8 trillion in debt. Do you remember that? Tea Party? Right. Yeah. Okay. My entire family stood up for that. Wanted to stop the debt. We were like 75% debt to GDP, right? Obama proceeded to double that in eight years. You know how much DT did it? In four years, he doubled the entire GDP overnight in his four years. You have roads, bridges, you know, whatever. Is there anything to show for that other than deep state technology? No, you don't know that. That's where we're at. Not, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Which, what's your, what's your point? Uh, eight trillion dollars we were in debt when the Tea Party existed. After the Bush administration, people were complaining about the debt to GDP, how it's destroying our country and the dollar's value. Obama went on to continue eight more trillion dollars in okay we're 16 trillion dollars in debt after his eight years Trump proceeded to like go 13 trillion dollars in debt after four years of his administration hello yeah okay so your your point is to escalate the debt no, he escalated the debt. He who? Trump. He has spent. And what have you received from that? I didn't ask for anything. No. <laughs> I didn't you ask. You didn't. No. <laughs> but he doubled the debt in his four years. Okay? From Tea Party days okay. after Obama, Trump doubled that debt from Tea Party days. Even after Obama administration, Trump is the worst president we've ever had in our existence. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate your call. Another opinion? A no Trumper. That's a good point. Well, good point. You know, I, you know what you know what I find you know what I find fascinating about this, Stuart, is nobody is looking at what Trump has done. And they'll well, pick okay, but the point is though, is like you yeah. said all he did is feed the demise of our economy. And, and COVID, he was all in on that. Can't ignore that. It was mm. it was his well, DHS I, I, that issued yeah, guidelines I, on what businesses were essential and non-essential. They set up that whole paradigm. He's got his own responsibility for that. Well, so he, did, he, he, he didn't... Plan. Wait a minute, Stuart. He didn't do this from the... Uh, look, you're an attorney. He didn't do this from a position of being president of the United States. He wasn't getting into that quagmire. He told the states, he said, look, this is up to you to deal with. And the signal... Yeah, I, he didn't, okay. He didn't just say states to deal with. He said, 
here are the guidelines for determining what is essential and not essential. He had DHS, his own DHS published those guidelines. Yeah. That's what the that's what state governors then used. So he's got a role to play in it. He owns responsibility for that. Okay. You know, let alone friggin' vaccine that they're trying to push down our throats at warp speed. Look, call it what it is, man. Let's let's take the lumps along with the stuff. You got to. Layla Otherwise it's just pure, yeah. pure head in the sand, you know, hero worship. Bottom line is is he is turning the presidency, the power of the presidency over to an imposter without a fight right now. Okay. You've made that point four times, Stuart. We heard it loud and clear. All righty. Okay. Layla in Canada, you're on with Stuart Rhodes. Stuart, I'm kind of concerned that we're being distracted with debating about Trump. Unless there's something he can actually do uh, okay, there's something after he, January he 20th. Post- yeah. Well, he should be doing it right okay. now. I'm just saying. Killing in his duty. So, well, after January 20th, yeah, January 20th whether Trump he failed... Be- whether he failed his duty, whether he was a saint or a sinner, is almost irrelevant. Um, and we're not irrelevant. A lot of us it's are pretty disappointed relevant. with him. It's pretty well, relevant. Well, we need to look the forward. The fight would be I a lot easier. Need... Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I was going to say the fight would be a lot easier with him. Chief, well, we're, we're going to have a fight. You're not going to get out of this without a fight. It's too late. You're not going to fix this with conventional well, politics. Yeah. Exactly. So you it's have to too fight. late to fight. You want to fight while he's the president and commander in chief, or you want to fight with Biden in there as an imposter in command of their armed forces? Mm-hmm. Which one's better? There's, there's no point fighting at all because we're going to be outnumbered. The Biden people, whoever is pulling their strings, have been planning this for a long time, and they've got all their I'm not, auxiliary I'm not troops to all prepared and ready to go. I'm and I don't think we're. <laughs> Wait a minute. Layla, hang, hang, think... Laura, uh, Layla, hang on a second. He's trying to respond to you. Please go ahead, Stuart. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm I just saying. I'm not, I'm Layla, not... hang on a second, please. Go ahead, Stuart. Yeah, of course. I think we owe it to our forefathers, to everyone that's come before us from Lexington Green on, to not just give up and throw up our hands and get on our knees. Well, I, we I'm not. Do that. Okay, well, I, I'm certainly not. So subscri- I'm just saying, I, I don't yeah. think it's hopeless, is what I'm saying. And, and I'm, not not ad- I'm not advocating that at all either. If there's one thing I've been all my life, it's a fighter. However, I hope, I'd like to think that with age, I've learned that you've got to pick your fights and the way that you exercise those fights. The best way is not to be obvious about who you are and what you are doing. That's what they've been doing. They have not been as obvious as they might have been. I mean, they were obvious at the end when we finally saw what was in undeniable. But it had to be undeniable before we finally acknowledged it. Meanwhile, they were, they were employing, they were putting in all the underpinnings and bringing in all the, all the side players. And, um, and by the time that we realized that it was just a little bit too late. And the other problem is that the generation that was educated with regard to what we should have been doing um, are are no longer as young or as energetic as they were, and the next generation. <laughs> you got that right. Is, <laughs> uh, yeah, the next generation coming up is is all bowing down to Biden. Right. In fact, I was actually astounded. I was speaking with a man today who is much older than I am, and he was a totally anti-Trump, and almost, and he's in Philadelphia, and I was talking to a lot of Canadians, and they're all anti-Trump. I mean, it, it's so. It has been so thoroughly effective, this, this, this downgrading of Trump. So let's not us do what they're doing. Let's not do their job for them. All right. Let them focus on Trump in the past. Let us now watch very carefully as Biden, the puppet, proceeds, and then look for the slightest inroads that we can make. All Meanwhile, right. we've got to strengthen our position. All right. Layla, i got to go to break. I've skipped the last one, so I owe this to the network. Laura, Lauren, James, and others, everybody hang on. Stuart Rhodes is my guest. Very glad to track this guy down, and he's sitting alongside a lonely road in Montana right now talking to us. We greatly appreciate that. We'll be right back. One shot at a time. All right, we are back. Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget the offer that FrontSight is making to the listeners of this network. 
And again, I hope you understand why I brought this on board on this network to make this offer available to you. Commander membership, lifetime membership that is transferable, that allows you into any course that Front Sight teaches. That could be anything from hand to hand, um, to tactical, to SWAT, to anything. This is up to you, and I've urged people to send their own people over there to train and then turn around and train their own cadre. And, Stuart, before you get out of here today, I want to talk to you about um, the militia, how and why people should be forming them right now. But let me get on with these calls because I've got loaded phones here. Laura in Michigan, go ahead. You're on with Stuart Rhodes. Oh, Stuart. Because of because of Biden's ties with uh, entanglements with China, okay, he couldn't even qualify for security clearance. So my one question is, Stuart, do you think tomorrow the military is going to take over the government? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, and, no. And the way it, the way it was done, Stuart, fifty states they had to sign, they had to take a new oath. And they were put under... I didn't see that. Where did yeah. you see that at? Uh, that is on the web. It's all over the web. They were they were made... Yeah, well, I've been traveling. I've been, yeah. Go ahead and read it to me real quick. Well, and, and I don't have it right in front of me right this minute. I'd have to dig it up. But in it, okay. um, they had to take a loyalty oath. The FBI also <laughs> did background checks on them to see if they were Trump supporters. And if they were, they were excused. This has been... Politi- that shows you what they're worried about. Yeah. That's actually a good sign. Those those they're afraid of their own troops. That's good. Well the governor and That was my point yeah. earlier. Yeah. You can't just give up because yeah. there's a lot on our side. They don't trust their own troops for good reason. Okay? Well and That's Governor good. Abbott here of Texas, uh this was on One America News this morning, folks, uh said that if he would have known that, he would have not have sent the National Guard over to Washington, DC. But yet, I don't we, trust Abbott as far as you can track him. <laughs> <laughs> him, him and his chair. Now, hey, look, we still got mass mandates down here, okay? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there right. with you. All right, Laura, thank you. I appreciate your call. Let me go to Lauren in Ohio. Hello, Lauren. Hey, <laughs> how you guys doing? Good. Um, hey, attrition is as good a strategy as any. Who, who makes the products in this country? That would be the conservatives. Who actually produces, makes something real, land, cattle, gold, silver, something you can sell for a dollar. You see, it's the, it's the Democrats in the teaching and the government jobs and the, you know, all the things that are skimming and scamming off the people that are working and really producing something. That's, so if we yeah. actually understand what, who and what we are and we apply the law as it stands, we don't need to fight. We don't need to rebel. You can't rebel against illegitimate authority. You know, if the Masons tell me what to do, if the French government tells me what to do, am I rebelling not to do what they say? Who the heck are they to, you know? So let me ask you, Stuart, if you, what you think of this, okay? So I'm looking at the Constitution, Article 1, Section 4, Paragraph 2. The Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, and such meetings shall be on the first Monday in December, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. So it shows you right there. When you look at the, what is this country established to be? You know, what was the purpose of it? It was made to give life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to the creation that God made. Men are creations of God. He, the, the one that creates is the one that controls. He has the right to tell you you have free will, and he's the only one that can enslave you. Now, you can contract to be a slave, and that's what people have done. Yeah. But let me get to the other part. Article 20, 1933, they gave you your booze back at the same time. Right now, they're giving you your pot, they're giving you your hard drugs, while they put in this corporate government. This, in 1933, they were putting in this section. Okay, so um, Article 20, Section 2, the Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, and such meetings shall begin at noon on the third day of January, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. How in the world do we go from not meeting all year and just at the end of the year to make sure the Constitution, everything's cool, and then to go to meeting every year, starting at the beginning of the year, and then telling all the people what to do? But that's what the 14th Amendment citizenship is. And I don't know if people are rolling their eyes or what, but if you look at a passport application, it says that U.S. passports are given to two types of people, non-citizen nationals and U.S. citizens. 
The non-citizen nationals are free men under God. They're above the law. Okay, they're, Lauren, they're Lauren, I'm going to ask you to make your point, so we, I, I'm telling you we've okay, got a so limited here's time. Here's the thing. I would like you uh, to, to talk to a guy named Kelby Smith. You're a lawyer. He's doing this. He's been doing this. Um, you've been on uh, Daniel Brigman's show, you know, the, the PowerHour.com. You've been on there. And this is real. I'm telling people the truth. You can keep your money. You can have bank accounts that aren't bothered by the IRS. You have a passport. Okay. It, it, you're, all it is is a difference in status. And my point is, if we understand that, we don't need to fight anybody. We just step on over. We just come out of her, my people. So if you have a chance and if you're interested, the man's name is Kelby Smith. It's hisadvocates.org. And for people that aren't Christian, statecitizen.org. But you can, he'll talk to you about what they're doing. They literally send the notifications to State Department, IRS. Okay, IRA, one, okay Lauren, Lauren, you're you moving at light contract. speed here. Okay, the two websites again, please. Okay, it's hisadvocates.org, and that's for Kelby Smith. It's, and then if you're not a Christian, you don't want to talk about God, and that's fine. StateCitizen.org. StateCitizen.org. Okay, and got it. And it's literally a state passport. If you look at it, you know, I won't go into all this. You guys. Right. But I well. would love it if you, this is what I think we need to do. Instead of keeping our eye on what they're doing and being pissed, and because what they're doing is wrong. A carjacking is wrong. But you change what you're doing. It's like you guys were reviewing what we've been doing politically Lauren, for the last three Lauren, years. Lauren, 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 you're going to keep going until I stop you, and I'm going to stop you here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I, I do appreciate that information on those websites. I'll look into the guy. Might interview him. Uh, depends on his availability. I thank you so much for your call. James in Vancouver. Hello, James. Yes. We need a president who is a businessman. We need a president that will support the XL pipeline. We need a president who is going to maintain that those coal fields that were opened will still be opened. We need better energy sources. Well, you, okay, okay, James, again. James, I, I understand what we need, but you're not going to get it under this administration. They've already made themselves uh, made themselves clear by executive <laughs> order. Biden's going to cancel a lot of what Trump has done, so that's a given. I know what we need, but that's not what we're going to get. And what what this program is about today. Stuart, I guess this would be a tactical and logistical approach against flat-out, in-your-face tyranny in this country. I, I can say it no other way. Right, which was what I tried to give. You have to follow the, the founder's example. Human nature does not change. The technology changes. Human nature does not change. So the answer is still the same. And listen to what Alex Solders, Alexander Solzhenitsyn said in the Gulag Archipelago. Right. He talked about how they were in the camps, in the concentration camps, and they, he said, I'll be, burn, I'll be burned in the camps later, thinking, what if? What if we had realized the full extent of the situation? What if we had realized we had nothing to lose, and if we had fought back, if we had ambushed the secret police instead of hiding in our apartments, hoping that they would take our neighbor and not us? I'm paraphrasing. That's what he said. Right. They should have come together and then ambushed them. And he said, despite all of Stalin's thirst, the machine would have ground to a halt. And that's the lesson. And the founders knew that knew that history and that lesson. That they, they experienced human nature on the force of Nathan. And so they had militia. It takes That's why they put the Second Amendment in there. That's why it says what it says. It's not for you to own individual weapons only. It's for you to come together with your neighbors and protect each other. That's the whole point. You know, it was people in, just don't yeah. want to get. They don't want to look at that. Yeah. Like they want to try to find something else. Okay, let's talk about something else. You know, and, and they don't want to focus in on the, the central necessity of that. You know, it was r rather interesting back in the '90s with my association and helping build militias in this country because we fully believed that uh, the Attorney General Janet Reno, President Bill Clinton, their anti-gun stance. They were laying it on fat and heavy. You, the state started to chime in with their own regulations about protruding this and magazine capacity that and flash suppressors, and it got ridiculous. And that's what started the militia movement back in the 90s. So here we are with a full-on, and, and for a lack of better term, I guess communist assault in your face. This is nothing more than a transition 
of a Republican form of government into, I don't know, Stuart, uh, it, we're going to have to come up with some new terms with this one, fascist, socialist, communist, a mix of all. But it's going to be... It's all true. It, exactly. Thank you. It's going to be in your face. All right. Let's keep moving here. Uh, thank you for your call, James. Paul in Florida. Hello, Paul. Hello, John. Hi. Hey, uh, I was listening to your show in 2009 on Inauguration Day. You had a guy call in, George from Arizona. Remember him? Oh, God, 2009. No. Yeah, he was a guy. He was from Hungary. And he called in the uh, the day of a bomb, Barry Satora's uh, inauguration, a guy named George from Arizona. And he said, John... I'm familiar with what we're going, what this country is going to be facing. Okay, yeah, I the Judeo, yep. the Judeo Masonic dictatorship, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to ask Stewart. Um, is Stewart still here? Yes, he's here. Okay. Uh, what what his organization has done since 2009? The top three achievements that he could recommend that he's done to prevent where we're at, where we're at right now. What yeah. have I done to prevent it? Well, I've tried to get yeah, yeah, off yeah. the from, from 2009 to from now, like, what has your organization done to stop from where we were facing what we're facing tomorrow? Okay, hold on. Go ahead, Stuart. Preaching them to get off their butts and form militias, but none of them ever done it. Are you in one yet? Probably not. So I can, I can preach it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And everyone keeps wanting to dance around what's necessary, and they don't want to do it. So your okay, your their answer was to form for militia, but but yeah, what's so your answer, pal? Eleven, 11 years, years later, you eleven years later, where we're in the position we're in. So what does that have to do? I mean, we're, we're not in any better place than we were eleven years ago with your philosophy. And that's my fault. That's all. That's all my fault, huh? Wait a minute, Paul. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm not saying it's your fault. Paul. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait, Paul. Wait a minute, Paul. Just everybody, hang on here a second. Your assertion. What is the three things you've done since 2009? This man. I gave him one. Yeah, it, so, uh, Paul. Uh, his his singular mission has always been since he's opened up Oath Keepers was to form militias. It was not multifaceted. It was not political. It was not fundraising for a favorite candidate. It was not this, that, or the other. His mission was to form Oath Keepers, reach out to military, both active and inactive, seated county sheriffs, police officers, all, that this is what we need to do in the future. That, is, that was his mission. Okay, so to ask him okay. if uh, if he was sprinkling fairy dust on a dog turd is not relevant. The man has well, done what he's done. Is, well, well, instead of going to the Capitol, you guys should have gone to the uh, citadels of media power and protested there. CNN, MSNBC, all these have other the media are the problem that? right now, man. Not going to the Capitol. Well, well wait, wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute, Paul. You're you're making a bunch of assumptions here. I need you to please close your mouth for a moment you know, because I want to uh, I want to clear. Really, I really got not time to, to be be called on the carpet by some guy on, on the internet. I really just don't. I got more. Important I don't go on the do. internet, man. <laughs> Paul. I listen to Paul. The you are. The guys. Paul. Would no, you okay. please stop for a second? I'm trying to be fair. I'm not trying to beat up anybody here, but I'm trying to moderate this thing, and, and it's it's a little bit difficult. You understand what Stuart Rhodes was doing. You were asking what other things. Have, okay, that was not his mission. And then you start bringing oh, up. Exactly what he thought I should be doing, so I must be wasting my time. Hey, Paul, show us how it's done. Lead the way, man. You're the guy with all the military guys. I mean, I'm just the guy just building this country. I bought, dropped but dropped. Hey, you know better. Of, uh, people you, I don't you know, know better, right? You just told us instead of doing what we did, we should be doing something different. So you know better. Show, lead the way. All right. Well, the media is still stronger than ever. We have no message out there. We're getting run over flat. So obviously, you're, the way you, your tactics didn't work and logistics didn't work. Well, wait a we're minute, in a Paul. Position okay, we are just pull your... him down for God's sakes. Gee. And obviously your tactics are working either, because it's the same thing, right? You, you haven't achieved your goals either. 
You know, I'm I'm anyway. I'm I'm getting a little bit angry here because what the man is asking you to do is beyond the scope of what you set out to do with Oath Keepers. And, and well, look, man, all of us have a responsibility to do what we can. That's all we can do. We all need to just. But you have got to get ready, people. You are going to be facing a totalitarian nightmare, and you got to listen to what the founders did. Go back and look at their example and do what they did. And if you don't want to listen to that, then fine. Yeah, but that's the right answer. Well, and they got he, together, and they got themselves. They they did mutual protection, and, and it, it came down to it. And and I want to bring up something that Paul did bring up, but he didn't give you the time to answer about going to state capitals. Now you went to Washington D.C. I went to Washington D.C. I was there January. And I've been 6th. to a bunch of state capitals. I was in Austin just last week. Mm -hmm. I was in Austin at the state capital in Texas. You know, I believe in going to your state capitals. I don't think it's a good idea to go there tomorrow. I think that's a friggin' setup. That's what I wanted to get to. Your state capitals that's what I wanted right. to get to. And and I have said the same thing, Stuart. What a way for a setup. Just as I thought Charlottesville was a setup, this is a setup on mass scale with 50 state capitals. People want to show the appreciation and the right of the Second Amendment and show up with arms. How easy is it going to be to run a false flag? Well, I was I was there. I mean, last last year, January twentieth, I was at the Richmond Open Carry event, which was fantastic. And of course, everyone was all freaked out. It's going to be, you know, a false flag and disaster, et cetera. And it didn't turn out that way. But I think this year is different because of what we saw happen at the Capitol, because of the the you know the manipulations by the Boogaloo Boys and anti and BLM people. I think that the the idea of going to your capitals tomorrow is a mistake because they'll be ready yes. to do more, more false flags. I think a better way to roll is to come together in your county, people who live in your own county, and start organizing, meet each other face to face, get to know each other, so you form a real unit in that county that you could help each other down the road. Not just go to not just go to the capital and wave signs at people you don't even know, and who knows who they are, what they're going to do, and try to rope you into it. So get together in your own county, and then you go to your state level as a unit. The people you now know or are getting to know, and under your own chosen leadership, then you go to the state level and meet with other people who have hopefully done the same thing, and they've vetted each other. So you're not just bumbling along in a big mass of people. That's what we saw at the Capitol. You know, and justifiably pissed off patriots, it was easy to manipulate them into going into the Capitol on camera, a lot of times without, without face masks, and now they're being rounded up. That's what's happening. So I think we need to be smart, be more careful next time. It takes, as I said, it takes two to tango. If if people don't show up at the state capitals to get into some sort of uh, heated debate or argument, if you would, with the prevailing Black Lives Matter Antifa, which I never understood how Antifa, Stuart, was allowed free reign in the cities of America without ever really being challenged, arrested, thrown in jail, didn't well, happen. Because Trump did nothing. He did. He did. He never suppressed that rebellion. The, the Democrats certainly aren't going to do it in their own cities. They get a free pass. But Trump should have called the federal, the National Guard and the Federal Service and done it. He should have back in the summer. That's when I first started advocating very publicly for him to declare an insurrection and use the Insurrection Act. That's what he should have done. He didn't do it. Missed his chance. So here we are. Kelly, so, but well, the answer and, for us is yeah. you, can't, you can't sit at home tomorrow. I think it's a mistake to sit at home. I think you need to get out and go and, like I said, Go to your neighbors and say, come on, all these Trump supporters, all the patriots in this town, in this county, let's get together and start planning for our mutual defense and also for our mutual defiance. We're going to live our lives, we'll trade with each other, we'll strengthen our local economies, we'll grow our own food. And you do that across your state, before you know it, you've got a strong, sovereign state that stands up together against the uh, illegitimate Biden regime. That's the answer. Well, uh, do you, any any bets on will we hear Tenth Amendment of the state constitutions in 2021, or have uh, these governors just rolled their toes under? Well, you got a clean house in your in your governor's offices too. You got a clean house in your legislatures. You know, you got a few good governors. Texas does not have one. You guys need a new one. Abbott's a piece of junk. You know, he's, well, he's hey, all Matt, about Matthew McConaughey uh, said he wants to run. <laughs> Yeah. Uh huh. Kelly. Like Chad Prather, right? Let's, let's have a comedian or an actor. Well, that's, all right, all right, all right. That's the one thing I know he's famous for. Well, all right, all right, all right. And then he stole that. Uh, Kelly in Austin, you're on with Stuart Rhodes. <laughs>
Hi there. It's certainly a pleasure to hear Stuart Rhodes. Uh, I, I know what you've done for a long time, and I appreciate all your efforts, Stuart. Uh, uh, tomorrow at noon, the nation becomes a vassal state of China. There's no other way to That's put it. That's right. Yep, um, you're right. Yeah. Except that we've we don't we've accept that. We've, well, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long, hard road, uh, road here. Uh, the the incoming administration is very afraid of something. I'm a ham radio operator. I have a general operator's license. We received email from the ARRL this weekend and, and disseminating an email from the FCC telling ham radio operators not to use their radios to commit crimes. And what they were concerned about mm. was ham radio operators cooperating with each other uh, to, 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 uh, to help coordinate movements of, of, of militias. Um, that's what that was. And yeah, uh, I think... You can see you're right. Yeah. And go ahead, I, I go think ahead, you're going to see the Biden administration I think you're going to see the Biden administration do whatever he can to try to clamp down on ham radio again because they don't want people communicating with each other. Right. Yeah. Really? They, they, so do what no, they, I, fear. I, I, they fear. They fear They fear you communicating. They fear you coming together in militias. That's what they fear. So do what they yes, fear. Yes. That's what you got to do. Yes. Now, I have a question yeah. for you, Stuart. Um, yeah. I said, I said for a long time that I think this thing is going to explode. And my question for you is, at what point, how and when does resistance to this criminal administration come in and become kinetic? And, and, and well, I think again, you look at the you look at the founders look at the founders' example when they came the raid on Concord by the British regulars was for two purposes: one, to arrest the Patriot leadership, John Hancock and Sam Adams, in particular, because Concord had become the revolutionary government seat in, in Massachusetts. The second reason mm-hmm. was to seize firearms, right? Seize guns and powder. So those are the two. They come for your leadership, and then they come for your, your firearms, and then you have to fight back. But make sure, this is why, like, Mike Vanderbilt, the late great uh, founder of the 3 Center movement, would always say, no Fort Sumters. You make them come to you. And it can be frustrating to wait, mm-hmm. but, hey, make them be the obvious, clear aggressors. Now, why is that important? Because the rank and file and the military are watching. You want them to be see clearly who the real, the real bad people really are. Right now, the, the powers that be are trying to paint us as bad people right. that the military needs to watch out for. And you even have the Joint Chiefs of Staff issuing that horrendous letter about honoring and defending the Constitution when they're doing everything but, and trying to get the troops to trick them, to trick them into believing that to honor their oath, they must fight us. So we want to make sure that Biden steps on his crank and shows his true face. Let the troops see what he really is. And the fight starts, it's going to happen eventually, but hopefully it will happen to their terms that make it clear to the military whose side they need to be on, and more of them be on our side. That's, that's the goal. That's it. Well, and I'm, I'm sure that the rank and file of the military are, are, are with us. I, 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 don't trust, I, I don't trust the Joint Chiefs of Staff or, or, or the upper ranks in the, in, in the military right now. Uh, uh, Obama... I don't either. Uh, ...cleaned the, rank, clean, clean the ranks out in his, in, his, uh, in his administration, and he replaced them with loyalists. Um, he did, you're right. So I, yeah, I agree. Yeah and, I, I, yeah, and so I don't think he can trust anyone in the upper ranks of the Pentagon to be on the side of the people or of the Constitution. No, I think, I think you're correct, but they have a serious problem because the lower ranks are still from us, still from we the people. So, but you're right about communication. That's why, like, I wrote this, you know, hey, here's what you need to do. And the first thing I said is emergency comms. you got to make sure that what if the power went out tomorrow and there was no cell phones, no Internet? Could you communicate? If you can't do that, the running off to your state capital does you no good at all. You better get your stuff, you know, wired tight at the county level with TV radios at right. least right. to be able to communicate with each other. You know, yeah. Then ham radios after well, that. I've been telling people that they need to get their ham licenses. They also, if they, if they don't want to get a ham license, they need to get a GMRS license. Um, you, you can communicate over a distance of several miles, uh, and with, within a small group, those, 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 those radios are very effective. Even FRS can be, can, can be effective. But, and, and, <laughs> That's right. and, and with the hell that's coming our way, 
the, the more we can communicate with each other, the better. And this is where a ham radio, especially if you can operate, if, if you if you know how to operate simplex, because I, I would expect the bullet to All try right. to. Uh, Kelly, we're repeaters. coming. Kelly, we're coming up on break. Stuart, uh, I've okay. still got a few phone calls to go here. Can you hang on a few more minutes? I know you're traveling, but can you indulge us for yeah, a few? Okay. okay, real good. All right, yeah, Kelly, sure. Kelly, yeah. ha- Kelly, hang on one second. I got Steve Elkins down in God's uh, sandbar, God's waiting room in Florida, my co-host on Monday shows. We'll take the top of the hour break. The website is back up, ladies and gentlemen, oathkeepers.org. Stuart Rhodes is the guy that's been running this for a number of years. And what we're talking about is resistance to tyranny. That's not only God-given. It's the right thing and legal thing to do. Homeowners, if your lender has... Back second hour of the National Intel Report on this Tuesday, 19 January 2021. We're talking with Stuart Rhodes from Oath Keepers. Kelly and Austin, please finish up. I don't want to hold Stuart up. Uh, unnecessarily here he is traveling in montana i i appreciate that anyway the, the, the communications are going to be very very important uh, and i would expect them if they really try to clamp down to try to shut down repeaters uh which makes it difficult to use your ht but if you can operate uh if you can operate simplex you can still communicate you can still communicate with people you don't need the repeater to do that and if you have the capability to get on uh, if you have an hf rig i have several of them you can get on High frequency for the high frequency bands to talk to people all across the country. And that's going to be very important. Well, and people as you to, as you pointed out, the FCC is now wading into the arena, not and they're telling you not to be a hateful person. Well, <laughs> ham, ham radio operators are hateful people. Patriots. You don't have to. You don't have to convince me, Kelly. I'm just pointing out the fact that the the <laughs> FCC already saw this coming. All right. Hey, I appreciate your call, and the question still stands: Who do we shoot first? <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate. I appreciate your call. Uh, just a little background on that. Uh, he would call into the program of late, and I was asking the question: You know, who do we shoot first? And what we were we were being asked to predict things in the near term future, and what do we do if if if? And the only answer I could give is we will deal the, with that when it happens. You can do all the pre planning you want, but you cannot predict the future. It's standing ready, being truly minute man at a moment's notice, and defending yourself, your family, your property, and your communities against illegal and unconstitutional assault. I think people, Stuart, people better realize that we're on the right side. There's no equivocation about this. This is the preservation of our constitutionally limited republic, and that's the beginning and the end of the story. How that takes place, how long it goes on, it's going to be a matter for us, because we, the people, are supposed to be the government in this country. Steve Elkins. Hello, Steve. Hey, John. Hey, Stuart. Uh, question. I say, came up on my phone today. Clark County, Virginia, a uh, 65-year-old male, Edward Thomas Edward Caldwell, uh, calling him an oath keeper. The government and the mainstream media appears to be trying to connect the dots to that name itself, oath keeper, and I wondered if, if Stuart has uh, had any backlash yet with oath, his oath of keepers due to this uh, <laughs> This and and I think what you're referring to, Steve, is the article in the Telegraph. Uh, Stuart, I don't know if you've seen this. Yeah, I have. That guy's not a member of both keepers. We checked our database. He's not a member. Okay. But, you know, do, do you fear they're going to latch on to that word itself, Oath Keepers, and, there's, and just use it well, as an course. excuse to interrogate you and go after you? Yeah, I expect that. You know, it's, okay. it's, just, it's a badge of honor. We, we know they're, they're, they fear us. The people they're targeting are the ones they fear. They're targeting the Proud Boys, they're targeting Oath Keepers, they're targeting the Three Percenters, they're targeting the American warrior class. And they're trying to suppress us and trying to, you know, use the, the state to uh, take us down. So we've, we've been there before. We were there during the Obama administration. We were there, you know, at Bundy Ranch and after, and, and we've been, been through this kind of stuff before. So we just roll with the punches. We only had um, two members that I've identified that were actually that are in the media as being charged. 
So the other ones that they're asserting are Oath Keepers or Oath Keeper leaders are neither. Neither leadership nor, nor even members. So it's a plant so story. Expected. They can say anything they want. Whoever they supposedly have under arrest will verify and their story. It's a false flag, basically, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what it is is they just can't wait to, to claim that we were in charge of the whole thing. Mm. Like I told the CNN report earlier today, I did an interview with, if I had actually planned that, it would have gone a lot differently. You know? Well, absolutely. I, I know one thing you wouldn't have done, and I wouldn't have done it either, was letting people inside that capital. And, and that's the question that I brought up, Steve, and I did it with you on the program on my show, mm -hmm. was asking the question, when Donald Trump started speaking, that's when the assault on the Capitol building started. And why would you, Stuart, why would you want to interrupt a process of the electoral vote? Why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, look, it's, the whole point is, is that it wasn't a planned, orchestrated action by anybody in the, in the Patriot cause. There were Boogaloo boys, apparently, and also some BLM and Antifa, right. who did want to, they wanted that to happen. Um, the Trump supporters who went in there, here's one thing I will say. I think the political right in this country needs to stop adopting the left rhetoric about what happened. I was, I mean, I was outside the Capitol. I was watching what was happening. Didn't go inside. But a lot of the folks that went there, they were just doing what Trump told them to do. So he said, go to the Capitol, voice your support for the congressmen and, and senators who are standing against the, the fraud, um, and, and go support them and go stand against the fraud. And so, the, and he said, "I'll be, I'll, I'll go there with you." He, he insinuated he was going to be there. He never showed up. But they went and they did that. A lot of them walked right in. The doors were open. They didn't know who opened the doors. How, how are they going to know? They're in this huge throng of people, you know, 200, 300 yards long. And once they get to the doors, the well, doors were open. They walk in, say a few slogans, walk out. That's not an insurrection. That's a protest. Well, and, and the at most, yeah, maybe trespass. But even trespass requires you to be told you're trespassing. Right? You are trespassing. You must exit the building or be arrested. That would be what should have been done, and it was not done. Okay. Steve, anything else, sir? No, that's it. Um, appreciate your work there, Stuart. Appreciate your work. Hey, thanks, man. Mark in Florida. We'll get in two more calls after Mark here, and then let uh, Stuart continue uh, <laughs> with the journey. Uh, we don't know where this is going to end or how it's going to end. Uh, that depends strictly upon us are we going to die chattel slaves are we going to stand up literally for our country this is not a democracy folks it is a republic mark and Florida. Can you hear me, John? yeah go ahead uh, uh sure good to hear from you i'd like your uh, response to the gentleman uh you lead the way i'll, I'll go if you got a good a good plan uh, but do something take on the dog catcher take on your mayor your your what, uh, Mark, Mark, I'm getting a lot yeah. of noise off of your phone. Well, hold on. Yeah. Oh. Okay, try this again. Is it better now? Much better. Go ahead. Okay. Um, but I wanted to ask, Stuart, um, we got a mandamus. Uh, just about every state has a health code that before they can quarantine or lock down anybody, they have to prove an infectious agent. They have to prove how it's transmitted. And then they can only quarantine the sick people. And that's what that's how it's basically written in Tennessee. And we've got a mandamus that the courts and the uh, attorney general is our worst obstacle in, in forcing a governor to abide by the law. Do you have any thoughts on that? Have you tried any mandamus or quo warranto or anything like that? that uh, uh, no, I, I think I think the right answer is just this defiance, just nullification and defiance. And we've seen that across the country. In fact, right in Texas, where I spent quite a bit of time recently, you had businesses opening up in defiance of the governor. You had threats to arrest them or threats to take away the business licenses, and then eventually they, the, the powers of be buckled under, and, and it was a bluff. So I think the more people come together in your town and the county, you do it together, united, you're most likely going to be successful, especially if you've got a good sheriff that will stand with you as well. That's why who your sheriff is is critical. Um, make sure you've got a constitutional sheriff. You're going to need that coming going forward. 
And thank you. But for, I think I think yeah. the right answer to all this COVID stuff is not to recognize it as legitimate. Don't go to the court hat, hat in hand. Live like free human beings and tell them to stuff it. That's what the founders did. You know, Hancock was a notorious smuggler. He smuggled like crazy to get around the crowns you know, nonsense regulations that he had to go and land his ships in England and pay money and offload them onto another ship to go to Denmark, you know, just to make money for for people in England. So he just went ahead and sailed right around England. He mm. just ignored the the, uh, the ridiculous pretend legislation. Many That's would what they ar- called it, right? Many would argue, Stuart. Pretend legislation. Yeah, many would argue, Stuart, that we're still members of the Crown. <laughs> All right, Mark? Well, you know, I don't want to get, I don't get into... It's like a bunch of arguments about what, right. what, what's our rural legal status. My rural legal status is yeah. I was born a free man, and I'm going to die on my feet and then live on my knees. There you my go. Legal status. Uh, it's been my so. message for years. Thank you, Mark. Randy in South Dakota. Hello, Randy. Hi, John. Hi, Stuart. Hello. Um, hey. I got. Uh, uh, I'm building a silver bullet, and I need your guys' advice if you think this is. This has already been started. There needs to be 30 people in each one of the 3,100 counties in the state or in the country. And with them 30, 3,100 counties, we have to do the paperwork to redress state government and then redress federal government. And while these smart people are doing the paperwork, we go to Russia and we ask them for their protection oh. and we offer them a third of Canada. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then we, and, oh, and, man. and then, yeah. then there won't be near as much bloodshed, right? <laughs> well, Randy, a very interesting proposition there. Um, we're trying to build the next boogeyman, and it's China, 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 and I get and understand that. But I'm hearing that Vladimir Putin is an enemy and always has been of the U.S. Stuart. I, I'm looking at this. Well, I mean, I think any any dictator is any, any dictator in the world is, is not a, a friend to Republican government and 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 self self government. So that's a fact. All right, Pat in Fort Worth. Uh, no more calls after Pat. Mike, go ahead, I, Pat. Go ahead. I guess you could. I guess you could tell. Oh, uh, what uh, they your enemies think about you by what they say. I want to read you. A headline in a Fort Worth Star Telegram of February 28, 2020. Uh, rebellion bent Oath Keepers militia infiltrates Texas police. A national leader of the conspiracy obsessed Oath Keepers militia is recruiting law enforcement officers to a new chapter in Granbury, southwest of Fort Worth. <laughs> okay. If he would, this guy, yep. he runs the Bad newspaper, honor. Bud Kennedy. He runs the newspaper, and he's the leftist liberal. And so, yeah. even the headline yeah. made right. you read it. And I said, "Good, that's the first good thing I've seen in that newspaper." In a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Pat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. He was, he was he was spreading the word, spreading good news. Let's uh, let's do a recap here, and now I'm. I'm sure people are going to be a little bit confused if they've never reached out and tried to talk to their county sheriff. Uh, he is the peacekeeper, he, the original peacekeeper, not law enforcement, peacekeeper. He's constitutionally elected. He's not a police chief. He's not appointed. I've seen some real wingnuts as chiefs of police uh, for the enforcement of the administrative state. Stuart... When you're telling people you're you're saying go to your red county sheriffs and go what what is the dialogue supposed to resemble here? What is the message that we should be sending our county sheriffs? Well, you should be reminding the sheriff that he swore the same oath that we did when we served the military, that he has a responsibility to keep that oath and the people are looking to him to protect them. He has responsibility. Have him go read the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions by Thomas Jefferson and uh, and 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 Madison about the responsibility of lower magistrates to intercede and interpose, not just refuse to take part, but also interpose themselves in between the people and unconstitutional oppression and defend them. And also remind him that that no, to date, no sheriff has ever stood up 
to either state or federal government that's been an abuse of the people's rights has ever been run over by um, either the state or the federal government. It hasn't happened yet. They have so far blinked and backed off whenever any sheriff has stood up against them. And we've seen that repeatedly. You can have Sheriff Mack on until you tell you the same thing. So they fear the sheriff because of the legitimacy in the people's eyes the sheriff uh, enjoys. They fear the people united behind their sheriff. They'll do what they fear. They fear the sheriff. They fear sheriff posses. They don't want a sheriff to have a posse like Sheriff Arpaio had. He had 3,000 men. They don't want that. So do what they don't want. All right. Stuart, I appreciate you spending the extra time with us today. Your website is back up and running. And um, is there an email list for alerts or anything that you're going to be? Yes. Yes, they go on the website. They can they can do that. We also have um, a free chat it's called Defend America Now, and I'm not sure if that's back up, but but if not, just check back in like one or two days. Um, you don't even have to be a member of Oath Keepers to be on that. It's totally free. We just want Americans to be able to talk to each other. But, if, but at least on a network we own, it can't be deplatformed. I mean, Liquid Web is true with us. But we've learned our lesson about service providers. Now we'll be on Epic, same place that that parlors will be hosted. And learn their lesson too, right? So now we'll be on Epic, and hopefully Epic will be staunch and uh, will not um, play the game, not bow down. Also, I want to encourage Oath Keepers that have not been active recently to become active once again. If you've never been a member of Oath Keepers, uh, look into doing that as well. Uh, Stuart, um, this is we're going to be heading into, how's the Chinese curse go? Uh, into interesting times. Right. May you live in interesting times. Yes. That's right. Yeah. All right. Stuart yeah, Rhodes. Interesting. So look, guys, I encourage you all to just think back and, and look back at our history. You know, if you're near Washington, D.C., don't go to D.C., go to Arlington. And go look at the, all the rows. And stay out of the state capitals tomorrow, especially yeah. with arms. And I would suggest, and I'm serious about this, folks, you want to show up and show support for your country against what? Do not give them the ammunition to load up in the breach and fire right back at you. Stuart Rhodes, Man, thank do you. It, do it, do it, do it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate uh, it. All righty. Okay, very good. All right, Stuart Rhodes. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Dark days ahead? Well, tell you one thing right now, this is going to demonstrate who's for the country and its people. There's no more equivocating here. It's everybody's personal responsibility. I've been on duty for 30 years, folks, and I don't get any retirement. I've been on duty constantly for 30 years in the service of my country. That's a, that's a pretty damn long time. And I'm guaranteed what? That I'm going to get crap for standing up for what's right? For what is lawful? If that's the case, I guess what you've done is legitimized me. Because if a communist wants to call me a troublemaker, I, I'll wear that as a badge of honor. Last night, and folks, I know I've been banging Fox News pretty hard. I've watched Martha McCallum. I've watched the other talking heads on uh, on Fox News, almost said CNN. But I do believe on last night's Tucker Carlson show, I think the man is backed up to what I des- described as the cliff, and he's looked over his shoulder, and he didn't see anything staring back at him. And I think... His true position just came through on his program last night. It was jaw-dropping. I didn't expect this from Tucker Carlson. We'll play that after this break, folks. I would not miss this. Good for you, Carlson. Now my question is, where are you going to end up next? And causing you... Lengthy, but well worth the listening to. And like I said, I think the writing's on the wall. 
and I think Mr. Carlson has been reading it. As I said, if he's going to maintain integrity and honesty, he's not going to be able to do it much longer on Fox News. There are expected to be more than 26,000 armed federal troops in Washington. No living American has seen a moment like the one we're watching now. 26,000 soldiers, that's more than five times the number of American military personnel currently stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. That is more than twice the number of troops that President Lyndon Johnson ordered to Washington in April of 1968. In April of 1968, Washington, D.C. was literally on fire. Race riots had broken out after the assassination of Martin Luther King, whose memory we celebrate today. More than 1,000 people were injured in those riots, and at least 13 of them died. Much of the capital was leveled, and it stayed that way. Blocks of charred rubble for decades. If you visited Washington in the 1990s, you remember what it looked like. But according to our current leaders, the so-called insurrection of January 6th was much worse than any of that. So far, here is the death toll from that day. A police officer was hit in the head by rioters, then later had a stroke and died at a local hospital. An unarmed protester was shot to death by authorities as she tried to climb through a window. A woman may have been trampled to death by the crowd. As of tonight, those are the three casualties we can confirm from the riot at the Capitol building on January 6th. In response to that, our leaders have assembled the largest military presence in Washington in all of American history during peacetime. In 1864, as the Civil War raged on the other side of the Potomac, and Americans died every day in large numbers in battle, there were fewer federal troops protecting Washington, D.C. than there are tonight. And it's truly a national force. The guardsmen you see in Washington have come from every state in the Union, as well as from Puerto Rico. And the question is, why is that? There's no practical or operational justification for it, for decades, Washington, D.C. has had the highest per capita law enforcement presence in the country and one of the highest in the world. So there was no need to fly in troops from Alaska to keep the city safe. But keeping the city safe was hardly the point of the exercise. The murder rate in the District of Columbia has risen with terrifying speed over the last six months. Men, women, and children shot to death in the streets. But no one in charge seems to care about that or even notice their deaths. So no matter what they are telling you, those 26,000 federal troops are not there for your safety. Instead, unmistakably, the Democratic Party is using those troops to send the rest of us a message about power. We're in charge now. We run this nation from Honolulu to our colony in the Caribbean and everything in between, very much including where you and your family live. Do not question us. Men with guns enforce our decrees. We control the Pentagon. And indeed, they do control the Pentagon. Republicans have spent years ignoring the leftward drift of our officer corps, but we can't ignore it now. The mask is off. Our military leadership, the very same generals who howled at the idea of deploying American troops to stop an invasion of our southern border, those same generals sent tens of thousands of soldiers with rifles to Washington purely as a show of force on behalf of the political party they support. And once they did that, they then allowed Democratic politicians to degrade and politicize the military itself. Democrats in Congress demanded that the troops sent to Washington this week submit to a political purity test, ideological vetting, as they put it, to make certain that every soldier professed loyalty to the new regime, not loyalty to our country, not loyalty to our Constitution, but loyalty to the aims of a specific political party. Nothing like that has ever happened in America, and just a few months ago, it would have been unimaginable. Suddenly, it's compulsory. Here's Congressman Steve Cohen of Memphis explaining why it is. The Guard is 90-some-odd percent, I believe, male. Um, only about 20 percent of white males voted for Biden. you got to figure that in the Guard, which is predominantly more conservative, and I see that on my social media, and we know it, they're probably not more than 25 percent of the people that are there protecting us who voted for Biden. The other 75 percent are in the class that would be uh, the, the large class of folks who might want to uh, uh, do something. We should pause that tape and we should consider for a moment and think deeply about what Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee just told us on television. He said that every white man in this country is a potential murderer. Every white man in America should be under suspicion, purely on the basis of being white and male, of planning a presidential assassination. 
He told us the National Guard is overwhelmingly white and male. Therefore, Congressman Cohen says, white male National Guardsmen must undergo government background checks to prove they're not planning murder. Steve Cohen didn't couch any of that. He just said it. And the CNN anchor nodded as he did. The rules on generalizations like this have changed quite a bit in a very short time. It wasn't that long ago, it was November 5th, 2009, that an army major called Nadal Hassan opened fire on innocent people at a military base in Texas. Nadal Hassan shot 45 people at Fort Hood. 13 of them died. When it emerged later that Hassan was an Islamic extremist, and then it emerged that the army had failed to notice his extremism or in any way protect the public from his extremism, no one at the Pentagon was court-martialed. Instead, the rest of us sat through months of lectures about how we had no right to come to broader conclusions about what had happened at Fort Hood. Yes, the shootings were bad, though not, Barack Obama made clear at the time, an act of terrorism. But far worse than mass murder, we were told, would be the sin of drawing any connection between Nadal Hassan's beliefs and the beliefs of anyone else in our country. Nadal Hassan was a single person, literally a lone gunman. He was not a stand-in for all Muslims. So stop with your prejudice, rednecks. That's what they told us. And by the way, it's okay that they told us that. Most Americans are decent people. They don't blame entire groups for the crimes of a few. Bigotry is immoral, and so is collective punishment. There is nothing more un-American than that. But not anymore. Collective punishment is now the official policy of the federal government, and it's enforced by the Pentagon. You'd love at some point to ask Congressman Cohen about the implications of this. Since we've established this new standard, this new requirement of collective punishment, what other groups of Americans, Congressman Cohen, should be denounced and hurt simply because of the way they look, simply because of the DNA they were born with? Or does this new standard apply only to white men? And if it does apply exclusively to white men, which is definitely the impression we're getting from you, how does targeting white men contribute to your stated goal of reducing white male extremism? Because doesn't attacking people on the basis of qualities they can't control make them more extreme, not less extreme? Aren't you persecuting them into behaving in precisely the ways you claim you don't want them to behave? And since you're not a moron, wouldn't all of that be obvious to you? So why are you doing it? Why in the name of fighting extremism are you, Congressman Cohen, creating extremism? By the way, dead certain, no question about it, that's exactly what you're doing. What, Steve Cohen, is your motive for doing that? That's a sincere question, by the way. Congressman Cohen is invited on this show any time to give us his answer. In the meantime, you've got to wonder about what the guardsmen themselves think of all of this, this new policy. Serving in the National Guard is not easy work. Guardsmen aren't paid much. Some, you've got to imagine, are doing it for love of country. Now they've been deployed to their country's own capital city, and they've been given orders to shoot their fellow Americans if necessary. That's a lot to ask. Now suddenly, on top of all of that, they've been told that if they were born a certain way, if they're white and male and therefore evil and dangerous, they themselves are under suspicion of being the enemy. They're potential killers, assassins, betrayers of a nation. We're not overstating this for a fact. Here's a National Guard commander in Puerto Rico describing to his troops the enemy they will face in Washington. They are white nationalists, he tells them. They are proud boys. Standing up for what's right. Yeah. If you wanted to stoke an irreparable civil conflict, you would talk this way and you would keep talking that way. You tell armed men under your command that they might have to shoot people who voted for the wrong candidate in the last election. You can see where this could all go. It's really scary. So where's the pushback from our defenders? Well, we didn't get any calls today from Republican senators begging to come on this show to talk about any of this or to push back against it. The Democratic Party is using the military of the United States, which they do not own, as a political weapon. But Republicans in Congress just can't be noticed, bothered to notice that. You'd think officers at the Pentagon would be outraged by this. It's such a total betrayal of everything our country and the military are supposed to stand for. Yet as far as we know tonight, not a single officer has resigned in protest. Background checks on people because of their race and sex? Because of their political views? Why aren't they protesting? Why aren't they resigning? We can't say we know some clearly agree with all of this, and they'd like to see it accelerate. Quote, I was chief prosecutor at Guantanamo for over two years, a former Air Force colonel called Mo Davis announced on Twitter today. And there's far more evidence of Congressman Madison Cawthorn's guilt 
than the guilt of more than 95% of the detainees. It is time we start a domestic war on sedition by American terrorists. That's a verbatim quote. And we'll repeat that sentence in case you thought you heard it incorrectly or we're making it up. We are not. A career American military officer has now called for, quote, a domestic war on sedition by American terrorists, a war. Among those terrorists, the ones he says are literally more dangerous than Al-Qaeda and therefore must be imprisoned and killed, is a 25-year-old wheelchair-bound Madison Cawthorn who was just elected by American voters to the United States Congress. But according to Colonel Mo Davis, Congressman Cawthorn, and the millions of Americans who agree with him, the ones who voted Republican in November, must be subdued by force. They are the enemy our military exists to fight. Now keep in mind that Colonel Davis, Colonel Mo Davis, spent his life under arms. So you can be certain he isn't using the term enemy in some metaphorical sense, as in Oreos are the enemy of an effective diet. No. He means enemy in the way Osama bin Laden and his co-conspirators at Gitmo were our enemies. And you remember what we did to Osama bin Laden. Has Twitter seen Mo Davis's tweet? Has the Secret Service? Do they care? Does anyone? Well, you know the answer. Well, a single one of Colonel Mo Davis's many allies in the Democratic Party denounce what he said, or even tell him to cool it a little bit. And what about the news media? Reporters are perpetually on the hunt for what they describe as dangerous extremism. Have they noticed Colonel Mo Davis on Twitter? Probably they have, but of course they agree with him. Just today, the Daily Beast, the homepage of our highly credentialed but not super bright ruling class, ran a piece with this title. Can U.S. spy agencies stop white terror? Other countries, the story pointed out, have domestic spy agencies to fight extremists at home. So, of course, we need one right away. What the piece does not mention is that those other countries would include China, North Korea, Kazakhstan. Domestic spy agency is a not very subtle euphemism for secret police. That is what they're calling for. Now, you'd think talk like that would constitute a big red line for the many professional freedom defenders in Washington, the ones you send money to. The think tank libertarians, for example, they're everywhere. But not tonight. Where are they tonight? A former U.S. military officer declares war on American citizens. Members of the media call for a secret police agency. This is the stuff of libertarian nightmares. It's what they claim to hate. So where are they now? Why isn't billionaire libertarian man of principle Charles Koch spending billions of dollars to stop this, these abridgments of liberty, these unprecedented attacks on liberty? He's definitely not spending billions to stop it. Doesn't seem doing anything. No one is. And so it continues unabated. Democrats in Congress support a new secret police agency, but why wouldn't they support it? What better way to protect your own power than funding a, quote, domestic spy agency to fight extremists at home? Those extremists, needless to say, will be their political opponents. So you don't have to worry about them anymore because they'll be in jail. Just last year, Congressman Brad Schneider of Illinois sponsored legislation to begin the process of creating just such an agency, empowering current agencies to spy on Americans based on their political beliefs. And guess what? Schneider's bill sailed out of the House Judiciary Committee. All but two Republicans voted for it. Nor did Republicans say a word when Congresswoman Grace Meng of New York sponsored a bill to criminalize the, quote, purchase, ownership, or possession of body armor. Body armor. Not the ownership of guns or bombs or even knives. That's where you thought we were. Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas just introduced legislation to require a license from the government in order to own ammunition. Well, that seems nonsensical and extreme, especially from a party that released thousands of violent criminals from prison in just the last year. But no, it's much crazier than that. It's banning body armor, devices that cannot under any circumstances be used to hurt another person. Body armor is purely defensive. Body armor exists only to protect the person who is wearing the body armor. It is already a crime to use body armor in most places while committing a violent felony. This is different. This would make it a crime to possess body armor at all. Why would you do that? Why would you make it a crime to possess something designed to save your life? That'd be like banning seatbelts or banning helmets. And actually, now that we mention it, Grace Meng's bill would ban helmets. Any helmet that might protect you from gunfire. For real. And honestly, you should pause when you hear that. What could possibly be the motive for it? We can't think of a non-sinister explanation for banning body armor. It should make you nervous to hear it's even being considered. But again, Republicans never said a word about this. 
They were too busy agreeing with Democrats that what happened at the Capitol was a white supremacist insurrection. Senator Jim Langford of Oklahoma, who tells his voters he's conservative, just apologized to African-American voters for ever mentioning the possibility of voter fraud. So then somehow that is now racist. How is that racist exactly? We'll tell you exactly the truth. What happened on January 6th was awful. We don't like mobs. We don't like vandalism. We don't like violence. We said it at the time. We'll say it again now. We'll never stop saying it. But what happened on January 6th was not an insurrection, and there was nothing racial about it. That is a total lie. It is told and repeated purely for political advantage. Here's what it actually looked like inside the Capitol when the first demonstrators burst in. Hey! Hey, man. Glad to see you guys. You guys are patriots. Look at this By the way, you cannot see this, but uh, this is our Viking helmeted individual with a um, Capitol Hill police in tow, smiling allowing this guy to go up and sit in the chair. I'm not kidding you folks. I looked at this and I thought, you know what? How on God's green earth was this a riot? Now the people that were doing the destruction there, we've identified as being Antifa, BLM, But you see, that message is not being carried on the news. There was about five, seven more minutes, but you get the idea. I think Tucker Carlson is looking over that cliff edge, and like I said, there's nothing staring back at him. What has been made clear is this rabble-rousing, always-Trumpers, this is political. This was all because of Donald Trump. Really. Was Donald Trump here at the inception of this country? Was he the original signer of the Declaration of Independence? Was he around in the 1700s? No. Neither were you or neither was I. But supposedly the framework of the government to give and afford the best opportunities for its people based on freedom and liberty, and again, spelled out, written down, Posted as the Bill of Rights, these are inviolate. These were not made, okay, these were the declarations and freedom of God that his people should be free. doesn't matter what color you are. But as we have observed over the millennia, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's hard to maintain a republic. It's hard to maintain that uh, that standard. And the original standard, ladies and gentlemen, was not just for peace or peace of mind. It was the pursuit of, and they changed the words, it was the pursuit of property, not of happiness. Happiness could mean anything to anybody. But a law of our law is based on property ownership. Castle doctrine, go down the list. Thou shalt not. It's supposed to be for searches and seizures upon warrant, not a rubber stamp. Not just go do your thing and we'll just get it in court and figure it out later. No, the place is to be searched and the things to be seized based on what? What is the great violation of this individual that you've got to bust into their home and not even bother to show paperwork and then just figure it out later. It's not what this country is based on. It wasn't the formation or the intent of this. What you're seeing today, ladies and gentlemen, right now, is an overthrow of the United States government. And it wasn't the Proud Boys, and it wasn't the Three Percenters. It was these people that want to flip our form of government. Now, I don't know what motivation people need. On this issue, I will speak for myself. I will not follow any other mandates, dictates, that are unconstitutional. I will not yield to their rubber-stamped warrants. 
I will stand now and forever as a free man. And I mean free. Now, also, of the 25,000-plus troops... Oh, by the way, I needed to play this. This is from Stephanopoulos of ABC News. And thank you, Tom, for sending this over. Now, if you pay close attention to what this man in uniform that has sworn under oath, constitutional oath, protection of this country against enemies foreign and domestic. The enemy is now within the gate, folks. And this administration and these traitors that are running around in uniforms from the Pentagon, doesn't matter. Take a look at who they are and what they are saying. Listen to this one. General William Walker, the commanding general of the District of Columbia National. Okay. Well, don't want to play? Let's try this again. Guard Major, thank you for joining us this morning. Can you start out by saying what the current threat level is? Do you have what you need in place to counter it? Good morning, uh, sir. I do believe we have everything. Uh, If I can first say um, happy holiday for Dr. Martin Luther King, and please allow me to say how proud I am of the almost 25,000 National Guardsmen who have come in from all 50 states and territories to help support the Secret Service and the police departments with a peaceful transition of military power. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Peaceful uh, transfer of military power. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell did he just say? The transference of military power. And folks, this has been obfuscated and hidden and never talked about. The executive branch is over the military as it's been since the inception, but this is now changing. The President of the United States is only Commander-in-Chief in times of war. And again, the executive is over the military, but only in times of war do you call the President Commander-in-Chief. That's something that is disappearing from the history lexicon in this country. So 2,000 National Guard troops in D.C. sworn in as special deputy U.S. Marshals. About 2,000 National Guard troops are sworn in as U.S. Marshals before Inauguration Day, the U.S. Marshals Service indicated. Chief Lamont Rufin from D.C. District Court swore in 2,000 National Guard troops as special deputy U.S. Marshals prior to the presidential inauguration, according to federal law enforcement agency's Twitter page. See, they have not been deplatformed. The deputation gives the Guardsmen temporary limited law enforcement authority pertaining specifically to the safety and protection of the inauguration and related events. This is according to U.S. Marshals, said in a caption on its Flickr page showing the Guard troops being deputized at night. Don't like that very much. Things should not be done under cloak of darkness. The U.S. Marshals Service didn't immediately respond to requests from the Epoch Times about the duties of the new special deputies. Last week, officials confirmed as many as 25,000 National Guard members were being deployed to the District of Columbia for Inauguration Day. A statement from the Army to news outlets said the increase in Guard troops would support the federal law enforcement mission and security preparations during the inauguration and would also be led by the U.S. Secret Service. According to National Guard Bureau Chief 
Army General Daniel Hawkinson said that our National Guard soldiers and airmen are set around the city to protect our nation's capital. From what? Razor wire? In the state capital? Nobody's going to be showing up. There's not going to be a million and a half people on the mall. There's not going to be a million people surrounding the state capitol. This is a show of military force to send the message to the American people. We've got the military in our pocket. We're in charge. And basically, you can go to hell. How many times have we seen these military juntas time and time again in third world countries? This is what's happening here in our country right now. And of course, the vaunted FBI that we can trust. Oh, there was just a couple of bad apples at the top, folks. Don't worry about it. You know, mid-level management and agents out on the road, they're good people. (laughs) Really? Uh, Last week, the FBI sent out bulletins for the possibility of violence connection with the events of January 20th. And meanwhile, President Trump was saying, hey, you Americans don't break the law. He did not incite violence on January 6th in no way, shape, or form. By special message uh, with the decoder ring, or an outright statement from the stage in which he was speaking. Amazing. Let's take this break. We'll be right back. Pundit, which has also been steadfast in its reporting accurately of what's going on. And I want to thank the guys over Gateway Pundit for sticking to your guns. And the Gateway Pundit has done some of the best work, if not the best work, outlining the case of the election results being askew. Rather than tell you my thoughts, here's what the analysis is. They make a lot of great points and bold claims. The Georgia late-night hidden suitcase heist in late December. Trump tweeted out the OANN report on the Gateway Pundit investigation of the Atlanta suitcase voter fraud. And they were the first to identify Ruby Freeman, her daughter Wandria Shea Moss, and their boss, Ralph Jones, Sr., in the infamous suitcase ballot hoist. We later reported on Ruby Freeman running the same batch of ballots through the counting machines at least three times after these Democrat operatives cleared the room of the observers. And Trump tweeted this OANN and Gateway Pundit video. Shea Moss is the same person who called out for uh, for observers to go home late on election night before the ballot heist. Ralph Jones Sr., is on audio telling reporters he was going to shut down the State Farm Center early and send observers home. This was before the suitcase ballot heist, of which everybody has seen that video. It was certainly a planned event. They had no idea they'd get caught. Now, Georgia elections official Gabriel Sterling later came out and told reporters this was completely normal in his state. If counting ballots without observers after you sent them home is normal, then Sterling should have been arrested by now. At the time, there was no evidence the FBI or Georgia Bureau of Investigations had interviewed or arrested Ruby Freeman, Shane Ross, or Ralph Jones. They should have been. This is a misprison, folks. It is a flat-out felony. 
The drop and roll, shutting down five states and then dumping hundreds of thousands of late-night votes for Joe Biden. Now, let me explain something here, folks. <laughs> this, ah, What Fox News has done has kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit because, well, 20 people have been let go at Fox for their calling the election on election night. The blunder, so to speak, okay? The blunder? Calling a state a state? Really? And it's been confirmed that President Trump is not going to welcome China Joe to the White House on Wednesday. Folks, may we live in interesting times? Boy, is that an understatement. By the way, there was a farewell party at the uh, White House. And guess guess who didn't show up to say goodbye to Donald Trump? Mitch McConnell and his established Republicans aren't going to say bye-bye. Also, Senate Majority Leader McConnell, the House Minority Leader McCarthy, and Vice President Pence won't show up to say goodbye in the White House to Donald Trump. Wow. We'll be back tomorrow with another National Intel Report. We're a little far down the line right now, but what I would suggest uh, in order to keep all of ourselves out of these little internment camps, the even the idea that we're sitting here talking about this is beyond most people's scope of even understanding. But I would say until we got to a point in this country of martial law or internment camps or whatever, that we once again seek out the roots that made this country so great and so envious.